Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Leading Edge Cricket Podcast. We're back once again, Robin Rich. It's the Leading Edge Cricket Podcast show, and it is the third round of County Championship Cricket. As soon as you get three rounds down into the season, you're starting to understand what everything is about. We're getting nine, eight games of cricket going on a week at the moment. We're going to break through every single one, take a look at the league table. And before we go there, a small plug for England Watch Cricket Podcast, which has been going on. We've got through three or four episodes so far. Last episode, if you missed it, go back and have a listen. We did a deep dive into the opener issue in English cricket, and we listed out the top 10 prospects to create a death chart around openers. And then in tomorrow's podcast, we're going to create it around the number three role, as in we're doing the two biggest holes that England's had for the last five or six years. So very exciting times. Not quite as exciting as some of the county championship games going on this week, Rich. Yeah, how we doing, mate? You all right? First off, everything good? Good. We're good. I, good. I, I actually feel like, a, you know, the excitement you used to get as a kid when sport's going on. I feel that mm. with the county Ooh. championship on a, it's a Thursday at 10 p.m. in New Zealand. Boy, it'll be <laughs> 11 o'clock for you guys on a Thursday morning. But you've got like eight, nine tabs, or I have eight, nine tabs, and I'm flicking between all the wow. games, and I'm like, Oh, this guy's batting. I want to look at him. Shine Shara Freed has got the new ball for Middlesex. I am watching that. I'm watching like his ball. And then when he's bowled his ball, I've got 30 seconds to watch mm. the ball on a different game and check what's going on. Watch Ed Pollock go absolutely massive in this <laughs> first session and then go back to a Freedy. It's, it's just gold. It is, Rob. It is absolutely amazing at the moment. Um, we've got a lot of detractors of Red Bull cricket, of county cricket, but there's so many performers at the moment. There's so much going off. First two weeks, we've seen tons we've seen international superstars do bits we've yep. seen seasoned veterans in county cricket do bits we've seen young up-and-coming players do stuff we've got tracks we've got innings you know tracks that are producing really good uh, wins you know we've got innings wins haven't we innings defeat so that means they're not just batting decks one team's batting well on them clearly but the other team is getting <laughs> skilled twice so there is so much going on there's so much to be excited about and it's it, this round three of county cricket it's no different results left right and center and massive performances as well. Yeah, it, it is. It's, it's, it's awesome. And Twitter is just an abundance of joy these days for what Ooh, it looks like, like for just Red Bull fans. There's a lot of Red Bull cricket mm. fans on Twitter, and we're starting to find them more and more. If you want to find us, it's at Leading Edge Pods. We're tweeting virtually every single day about county cricket or Red Bull cricket. Um, and, it, it, yeah, it just adds value to what you're taking in and how you're watching your game. And I love it. And I think... I think counties should be applauded for getting streams on. It was interesting. I, I I use my time strangely, but I watched the whole one hour, 50 minutes of the Lancashire ADM one night this week because um, life. And that's what I chose to do with my time while I was doing some statistic stuff. And it was really interesting. It looks like the ECB is putting together some sort of streaming platform for county cricket and up in the quality. No one said a word. But I took that as there's probably going to be a paywall <laughs> coming to county say, cricket. And yeah. we've already seen Warwickshire move towards not a paywall, but a login system to be able to watch their games through their website. So it wouldn't surprise yeah, me if right. things go that way. But if it's high quality, I wouldn't mind a login being the wall. I think I would object to a paywall being in place for Red Bull cricket. Yeah, that's a that's a red line, isn't it? At the moment, obviously, I, I just watch it through YouTube. Um, at the minute, they're getting some ad revenues, aren't they? If they want to stick an advert at the start, yeah. so that's gonna that's gonna be a bad thing. English cricket, what happened after two thousand and five? The Sky Sports has done a great thing. They really have. The coverage has been fantastic over the years, but we lost so many eyes, didn't we? So anyway, I don't think let's dwell on too, too much uh, today. But uh, it, the streams are amazing. Don't muck about them too much, ECB. You bunch of Insert word here. Yeah. So last week we started at Canterbury, mate. Canterbury Tales. And I mm. think we're going to go to Canterbury to start with again. A ben we Carton are. World. Yeah. So after after losing last week, Hampshire came back strong. Everyone's favourites for the Division 1 title. So let's get into this one. After amassing a huge 652 for six declared, Hampshire, led by Kyle Abbott with the ball, bowled Kent out in their second innings to go an innings win, Rob, and get them back on track after last week's as we said, defeat at the hands of Surrey. Nothing to be ashamed about. Surrey are looking good, but it was still a defeat. So let's get into it. Kent batting first, put up a decent score of 305 with long-time leading edge pod favourite, Daniel Bell Drummond. Go on, 149. Big, big fan. Always have been. 
Um, Rochdale legend uh, Keith Barker took six for 53 for Hampshire, Rob. Um, in reply, this is what Hampshire did. They went to work. No fewer than three Centurions. Liam Dawson led the way, 171. Ben Brown, what a signing he's been from Sussex, 157. And England hopeful, is that what we describe him as now? James Vince with his 111. Nelson Wicket. Um, Felix Organ and Keith Barker also showed their batting prowess uh, with 44 not out each before the declaration came. Um, second innings, Kent did okay with another solid contribution from Ben Compton, 89. Not quite the same as three centuries in three innings, but he had a pretty good game again, um, as well as up-and-coming Jordan Cox, 64. But it was just not enough, was it? As they were dismissed for 296, thanks in large part to that Kyle Abbott. Five for 29 in 16 over him. Felix Organ, 22-year-old, was also in the wickets of three for 63. Uh, Darren Stevens, I've got to get him a mention here. He was last man standing for Kent on unbeaten on 41. But that's Hampshire now. Two wins from their three outings so far. And I've just got to ask the question, Rob, what do we make of this Hampshire side? Hampshire are good, mate. <laughs> Hampshire This week? <laughs> yeah, yes, this week. But I think when you, you look top to tail on the team, the... The openers do cause me some concern. I feel like you've seen the best of Joe Weatherly. He hit that's above what he's been able to achieve over the last three or four years when he scored that 100-odd on the first week of the season. Gubbins is decent at three. He's a good quality county mm. cricketer. If Vince Dawson Brown is your engine room for the majority of the season, mm. I think batting-wise you're going to get yourself out of trouble more times than mm. not. And with the ball, if you've got... The legend that is Keith Barker, one season, 2008 at Rochdale on loan from Blackburn, bowling his left arm round, bringing it in and nipping it away, you're going to be okay. Mohamed Abbas, if he's around for the majority of the season, you're going to be okay. Kyle Albert's exceptional, and Liam Dawson is still a high-quality, functioning county cricketer. So I think Hampshire are in good order. I do worry about Kent. Kent have got the worst bowling attack in the league at the moment. And that's not mm. something to be proud of. They rank 18th in terms of the average that they've got going on. But the batting generally has been held together by Ben Compton. 464 runs at an average of 116 this year. And that's coming out of nowhere, other than the hard yep. work and, and mahi that he's put in over the last few years. But before this, and we spoke about it, there wasn't a body of work to go, this guy's going to be an exceptional county cricketer at mm. this level. Now we're seeing it. Daniel Bell Drummond, he's, you know... He scored all these runs at under-19 level for England. He was exceptional. 2019, he had a good season. He averaged 35. But there's been a lot of disappointments in Red Bull cricket for Daniel Bell Drummond. Mm. Partly, he's batted from one to six quite evenly, mm. other than batting at one and two for the majority of his career, over that period of time. So he's it's trying to work out what's the slot that he's going to play in. Hey, if he's going to go and bat at number three, he scored a 1,000 runs there now in county cricket. And he averages 30. He averages 40 at number four. So he's looking good mm. in that sort of role. But the bowling is challenging, I, I would say. And especially if they're going to continue along the same vein of form. They're averaging about 65 with the ball at the moment. You're not going to win many games of cricket. You're not going to take 20 wickets very often. And if you do take 10 wickets, you're going to be watching the opposition score 600. So they, they've just got a, a huge uphill battle to go. I think the other guy we need to talk about is... James Vince. James Vince, it's a much needed century. He's class. Mm. He's a very good player. It's a beautiful cover drive. He nicks off in test match cricket. That's what we saw. And what we've seen generally in county cricket is some really nice 50s. And mm. that's a problem for me. In 2021, he scored 100. In 2019, he scored 100. There, that, that's not enough for him to be a high-performing test match cricketer. And it's, it is what we've seen when we've dug in stats. It's the guys that can score hundreds are the ones that really generally make a pretty good leap upwards. And I ranked him the 23rd best top six player from batting at three to six in the order over the last four years. But he averages 40. But he's just not mm. got a really high conversion. In fact, he's 12% worse than the average county top six player at converting centuries. That's what he needs to get better at. And what can you do to get on the England radar Go and score 111. Good on you. Yeah, make the most of your opportunities. If, if this Hampshire bowling attack is going to keep doing what it's doing, he might only get one opportunity every week. Yeah. And the way things are going, depending on who they come up against. So he um, needs to make the most of how it. Did, how did Ben Brown never get a conversation with England? I know we spoke about this before, but and, and he's 33. So he's probably nice. not your target market to get an England job. But there's five scores of 150 plus 
since 2010. Yeah. He scored four centuries last year, mate. Uh, I rank him as in the top 10 of county championship top six batsmen, and he's never it's in an England conversation. And pretty, it's pretty ludicrous, isn't it? I mean, the fact that they've been able to pick him up from the, you know, part of that Sussex exodus uh, or, the, you know, the youth um, revolution. He's, he's always been a talented player. I mean, he, he gets in teams of his batting, let alone his, uh, his keeping, let alone the captaincy yeah. that he's done over the years. I, I would like to think, and I'm pretty sure, I'm like 99% certain that we had him in the conversation when England had full COVID. Uh, we lost a squad last summer. Yeah. And John Simpson was uh, was called up, wasn't he? I think it was more in yeah. the in the fifty over stuff, wasn't it? I think from right, yes. yeah. So um, I th- at that time I think we were looking at who else was there and was like Ben Brown. Why is Ben Brown not part of this conversation? Um, but hey, it is what it is. And and the county setups that he's been part of have been delighted in a lot of ways that he's not been involved in England because he's one of them players that if he'd have got a chance, you never know what he might have done. Uh, yeah. he, they might not have seen much of him. So yeah, I mean, huge, huge kind of plaudits for Liam Dawson, 171. The man is a all-rounder. Simple as that. Ben Brown was quality. James Vince, keep scoring hundreds. 50s and 60s won't cut it. We've said this about a number of players. Rory Burns of this world won't cut it. You've got to go big. That's what our issue is with you. Not the 40s and 50s and 60s and looking nice doing it. Well, maybe not so much Rory Burns looking nice doing it, apart from the flowing locks. But you've got to go and get those hundreds and, uh, and really make it count. Definitely do, mate. Where are we going next? We're going to Edgebaston, the place of the defending champion. So, yeah, Essex, Warwickshire, uh, Essex. Mm, let's just, I'll, I'll run through it and then we'll talk about what it was. It's a 10 wicket win for Warwickshire, Rob. That's a pretty convincing. It's as close to an innings defeat as you're going to get. Um, but no, well, not when you actually look at the, um, you know, it wasn't, a, it was a slightly closer game than we, we give it credit for. But it was this first innings, wasn't it? But Dom Sibley and debutant Alex Davis, they knocked off the 107 run target to record a 10-wicket win for defending champions Essex to get them up and running in the win column. Uh, the game was lost in the first innings. Essex putting up a very, very disappointing 168. I'm being very polite with disappointing. Um, only skipper Tom Wesley in the runs of his 80, but credit should go for Bears attack. With Oliver Hannan dolby 3 for 43 off 16, and Liam Norwell, 2 for 18 off 12. Uh, I know you've got something to say about him shortly. They both impressed alongside experienced spinner Danny Briggs, who also got four for 31 in his 15.2. Um, Warwickshire went on and took full advantage, advantage of this bowling display, which you don't always see uh, when the bowlers have done that job. So they really did put it together. They put, got a good, a really good 385, put them in the driving seat, led by keeper Michael Burgess's 170's fifth first-class 100. Uh, Aussie Mark Secretary took a pricey four for 130 off 26.2. Um, while Sam Cook did what Sam Cook did, grabbed himself three for 70 off 32. Nice and steady, two and a half and over. Um, Essex fought back in the second innings over 323, thanks to contributions throughout the order, including Sir Alistair Cook, 36, Matt Critchley, 49, jug avoidance, Adam Rossington, 52, Dan Lawrence, 44, a lot of starts there, and an unbeaten 77 from Simon Harmer. They set the Bears 107 to win, Sibley, 41 off 96, and Alex Davis, 65 off 131. They cruised along together to get the job done. Really impressive win. Essex losing the game in the first innings. Don't waste the first day, boys. Mm-mm. Yeah, losing it really, all thanks to one player because the game was in the balance. They were five for 124, I think it was, when Sam Hain got out. And mm. Michael Burgess, you know, you just mentioned he scored his fifth uh, first class century. This this is actually quite incredible. He scored two this year out of that five. He started in 2017 playing uh, county championship cricket. He scored 178 last week. I'm looking over there because it's got my data. 170 this week. He's just gone and scored back-to-back, 178, 170. Mm. That is absolutely insane. And a little bit like Ben Compton, but different. He's scoring his runs just sheer weight of boundaries the league average for boundary hitting is about 55 percent of your runs will probably be boundaries he's scoring at 69 percent at the moment he's hit 13 sixes this year in first class cricket already he's getting himself in and he is absolutely taking off it's incredible he averaged 28 last year 16 the year before so you know there has been hundreds in there but there's been a lot of inconsistencies thrown in item is the 56th best english player for a top six player in england um mm. before this season and he's just lighting stuff up so fair play to him because that mm. moment of going you know what we could be 200 all out or we could be 168 all out to going actually we scored 385 we've got 100 and 
60, whatever it was, we gave ourselves a massive lead, 200 run lead. Great maths, Carol Vorderman. <laughs> it just, it changed the game. And for, for all the quality of the bowling, you go, why did you win that game? And it, it's just purely down to Michael Burgess for me. That's just an incredible effort. Um, also, shout out to Liam Norwell, who got absolutely sconed on the noggin. Um, and I think he ended up in hospital going to get checked out, but has, mm. has since come out and is looking okay. But um, concussion protocols and all that didn't return to the field. No updates on whether he's going to be back for the next game as well, but never good to see when someone gets a good one on the head. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Absolutely. It's worth worth mentioning that part. Yeah, uh, just looking at the stats. Um, yeah, Michael Burge is second leading run scorer, isn't he? Behind Ben Compton, he of Kent. Um, Michael Burge is in two innings. I didn't even pick that up. It, it slipped my mind when we were talking about that, actually. The fact that he's got 170 100, and 170. He's averaging 174, basically. The man doesn't have an average because he's, well, doesn't really. It's, it, you can't class that as an average at the minute. That's just bizarre in two innings that he's got those two scores. There's nothing average about it, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm trying to say. Badly. But yeah, that's incredible. The Bears fans will be rejoicing, I think. That's, it's a really good start to the season for them. Um, they're, just, they're looking good. Simple as that, isn't it? They're, um, winning a draw they're going to be there or thereabouts. I think that's what we need to say at the moment from them. Essex disappointing. They need to come back. They need to start batting. And, you know, look at that second innings. It was start, start fest, wasn't it? Everybody's making a start, but no one's going on to really kill that game off or, or set Warwickshire a 250 sort of score instead. Yeah. Um, if they did that, it's, an, it's a potentially different outcome. But credit where it's due, Dom Sibley carrying his bat through with Alex Davis as well. He of... Uh, banned for the first couple of games and then tried to run on first game of the season as a subfielder. <laughs> bad admin, boys, bad admin. Right, let's get over to the Oval, Rob. Um, yep. Impressive start to the summer, continue for Surrey. The edge past Somerset to record a three-wicket win with Ben Folks leading the way with a bat. Uh, he wasn't alone, but he I'm going to say he led the way all right. Uh, skipper Tom Abel got the early season struggling Somerset off to a fantastic start of a wonderful 150 as they compiled 337 Thanks also to Aussie opener Matt Renshaw, 48, and James Hildreth, 54. Uh, Jordan Clark, Reese Topley, both took three fizz. Um, in reply with a bat, Surrey fell a little short of Somerset, 308, with a back from injury, Sam Curran, top scoring with 80, batting at number six. Worth noting Ben Folks as well, continues early season form, 63, batting at five. I think that's quite interesting. That's, that's a decent spot in the order there, isn't it? Uh, Olipo also hit a typically breezy 47. This innings, though, was about Peter Siddle. And his 200th th- first-class appearance, he took six for 51, 26 overs. Stunning. Great performance by the... Uh, I always want to call him a banana munch for some reason. Um, I think he wanted an interview, didn't he, talking about the uh, how he, how many bananas he eats a day. So I feel like it's got to <laughs> stay. And, he, and he's Australian as well. I, I don't I know he's not a Queenslander, but it's, uh, it's close enough. Uh, anyway, the game turned in the third inning. Surrey dismissing Somerset for an under par 207. Jordan Clark, 4 for 52. Reese Topley, 3 for 55. That pair once again leading the way. The Toms for Somerset. The Toms. Tom Abel, 53. Tom Banton, 52. Tom Lamanby, 30. Uh, only contributions of note, although a target of 237 was a score Somerset. I think would have been relatively pleased with, um, with you know, going into the fourth innings. And it wasn't the easiest of chase. But Ryan Patel, who uh, started really well week one, he got himself 102, only his second first class 100. And this was his career best score. They got He got Surrey close, but there were seven down at the end when Ben Folks, 48 not out, guided them over the line. Jack Brooks, veteran Jack, Jack Brooks, Brooks even four for 73 was a pick of the bowl for Somerset. Victory for Surrey, moral victory for Jamie Overton over Craig in the Battle of the Brothers. The Battle of the Brothers, never a good place to be in the Battle of the Brothers. Um, <laughs> like... At the start of the season, we said, if Surrey have got England players available, they're going to be a very strong team. Guess what? Yes. They are available. They're doing reasonably well and they're winning games of cricket. But Top of the table. Top of the table, doing okay for themselves. Mm. But I think that the, the rise, and I've put on the screen, the rise of, of Ryan Patel. It's quite incredible. 35 games down into his career, an average of 27. Except this year, 75-16 not out. 58 against Hampshire. Five against in, in the first innings and 102 in the fourth innings in a winning run chase. That is quite incredible. And again, a guy who last scored a county championship century back in 2019 before this one. That's an exceptional effort for someone that's only 24 years old, Rich. Combat mm-hmm. um, open, and he's batted in the middle order as well. Played England yep. under 19s mm-hmm. back in the day. So probably one to watch, but he's someone that seems to have just an abundance of 
confidence about his game. He's scoring at a 62 strike rate, which in county cricket is just, unless you're Michael Burgess at the moment, just isn't really heard of. So kudos to him. Slight disappointment that Ollie Pope's average came down at the at the Oval as well. Um, <laughs> he's incredible. I put Ollie Pope down year, lol, as my notes for this. Um, at, at the Oval, in county cricket only, in county championship games that he's played, he's got 24 innings and he averages 99.74, hugely Bradman. Bradman-esque. This year he's <laughs> averaging 60 in county cricket overall, 237 runs, um, 100 thrown into the mixer, a 50 thrown into the mixer. I am joking. He's had one game where he's failed at the open. <laughs> things, things aren't on a downturn. Tom Abel does deserve credit. He scored mm-hmm. 150. I may or may not own up to the fact that I dropped him for Sam Curran in my fantasy team this week, which probably wasn't the best decision considering Sam Curran didn't bowl the ball. Um, but he did add a couple of runs. But Abel was brilliant. He's classical, just good looking the way he plays his game. Excellent technique. I'm not talking about his hair or how he looks, but just an excellent player to watch bat. The sort of player you could imagine batting a three in a test match team and not looking out of place at all. I really like his approach and how Interesting. he Interesting. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, he he, he mm. is just a solid player. He averaged 39 last year. He averaged 38 the year before, 31 before that, 40 before that. There's a century of season with two in one season in 2020 thrown into the mixer. And looking at his performance, he's 15% better than an average top six county cricketer. His average is above it, his balls per dismissal, his 50 plus per innings is uh, less than 10s and his 100 conversion rate. So <laughs> he wants to play cricket for England. People want to see him play cricket for England. People are talking about him playing cricket for England and he probably doesn't get enough love. And if you look at a guy scoring one century a season, you can see why he doesn't get enough love. Mm. You've got to be able to score bigger runs than one century a season or more consistent runs than one century a season. Great. Average 38, 39. That's wonderful stuff. 450s last year. Need hundreds. Got to score hundreds. And I'm going to keep coming back to it because it's one thing England haven't done well for a long time. And it's something that was done well for us for a long time as well. So, uh, kudos, um, Tom Abel, his first 150 plus score in county cricket. Yeah, keep him coming. It's, it's going to be a you know change the record, isn't it? This summer when we're talking about potential England players, it's not just about averaging 40, 50, maybe even above 50. It's about converting those scores, and that's what we've lacked in that top six, apart from if, unless your name's Joe Root uh, over the last few years, isn't it? So Tom Abel, put yourself up, be be the Tom of the Toms, um, and get yourself uh, big those big scores. Let's keep moving it, Rob. Old Trafford. We saw the return of Jimmy Anderson. Gloucestershire on their side of things, though, they're going to be without Nassim Shah, the uh, the young Pakistani uh, quick. He's had to uh, cut short his spell here. But we did finally see Jimmy Anderson. Do we see Stuart Broad later? We will see. Um, Bored face of that conversation. Anyway, let's talk about this game. Gloucestershire, Lancashire. We've had plenty of innings results so far this summer, Rob, and we had another here. Lancashire demolished Gloucestershire to record an innings and 57 run win. Um, much awaited return of Jimmy, Jimmy Anderson, but it wasn't him. It was the other bowlers who got the wickets on day one as Gloucester was dismissed for 252. And it was Pakistani star Hassan Ali taking a very, very, very impressive six for 47 with the also returning Saki Mahmood grabbing himself two wickets. Uh, with the bat, Marcus Harris, 6 7, and Chris Dent, 52. Him of the finest picture on uh, Crick Info. They looked cool really good at the top of the order. They did, yeah. They put 119 on before the slide began. Um, they're going to be really disappointed with this first innings. Um, after that, after the, t- the openers, really, it was only all around the Ryan Higgins, the re- ever reliable Ryan Higgins, who he, he's the only one that offered anything of real note. Um, in reply, Lancashire went and won the game in an innings, didn't they? 556 for seven declared. England hopeful, we're going to call somebody else in England hopeful, Josh Bohannon, firing his name into whoever the new coach selectors uh, minds will be. He got a career best 231 before nicking up. Uh, Captain Dane Vellis hit 190 second, uh, 100 in consecutive games. Contributions also come from Luke Wells, Stephen Croft and Danny Lamb. Uh, Zafar Gohar led the way with the ball taking four for 135 in just the 65 overs, Rob, in that innings. Uh, Lancashire bowlers then went to work with look of an international side, really, uh, when you're thinking of it. Uh, Jimmy Anderson, Hassan Ali, Saki Mahmood, Matt Parkinson. Um, they dismissed Gloucester for a similar score as their first innings, 247. Mars Hammond, 50. Tom Lace, 71. 
the only players really getting going. Hassan Ali, three for 49, giving him nine for the game. Saki Vermood, another two for uh, two for 46. And Matt Parkinson in amongst it, three for 79. And yes, the last word, Jimmy Anderson, he's alive, he's firing, he's fit. Two for 25 for him. He's still got a little bit. He's, he's still, still got, got some him, juice. Mm-hmm. He, he has. Like, Ooh. I put this out on Twitter earlier on screen. It's rank one to 18 of how teams were performing with the bat and ball. Sure, it's a small body of work. Some teams have played three games, some teams have played two. Lancashire, number one, Rich. Um, and quite rightly so. It's a wonderful bowling attack. They've currently got the third best bowling average going around, and they're averaging 64 with the bat from the first two weeks of the season. And you can see Gloucestershire down in 16th overall, 15th with the ball, and 14th with the bat. Mm. So the result probably isn't a surprise. But when I woke up on Friday morning, I watched quite a lot of this because I was watching Marcus mm. Harris bat and I was really watching Chris Dent bat because we put him on um, noticeable outside the top 10 England players for the opening yes. depth chart that we're putting together. Now, he did look really good in this mm. first innings. He looked high quality, played some beautiful back foot drive sign into the mixer. Great hair, casual. I like it. 2019, he scored over 1,000 runs and scored four centuries of each. Since then... 789 runs at an average of 28, zero centuries, nine fifties. So it started to go a bit awry for him, but what can you do? That's the mm. situation you're in. You've played against a, a, a just one of the best attacks you're ever going to face in county championship cricket in terms of consistency from every bowler, and you've gone and scored a 50. So um, good for you. Have a day. Marcus Harris got <laughs> out to Jimmy Anderson again. I think that's the third time this year that he's been out to him, including the Ashes. But Marcus Harris, let's not forget, average 54 last year in county championship cricket. He's an excellent mm. cricketer and will be a good cricketer um, for Gloucestershire this year. Josh Bohannon, this is how you get in the England team. You're on the radar. And you're the first person. Oh, 250 runs this year, 500. And two balls. He's striking well. He's got a century. He scored two centuries last year. He's averaging 54 over the last three years. He's batted at three and four predominantly with one mm. or two slots at five and six. He averages 59 at three. He averages 54 at number four during the last three years. That's just such high quality. And he looked a test match player. He picked up the short ball really well. He was solid and secure in defence. And his straight drive, his straight drives were something <laughs> to really get excited about if you're if you're into a good straight drive. Um, Oof, love it. One, one more, two more players to kind of touch on. Dane Villas needs a bit of kudos here. He's such a, a good underrated player. He averaged 35 in 2020, 37 last year, mm. and here he's averaging 116 this year with two centuries to his name. So in terms of a under the radar. Mm. You know, under the radar, there's bigger names as overseas yes. players in county championship cricket, mm-hmm. but he is absolutely high quality and performing to a really high quality as well. So I enjoy getting to see. I enjoy getting to see. I enjoy getting to see a little bit of that thrown into the mixer as well. <laughs> and you can't go far wrong with Hassan Ali, mate. 19 mm-hmm. tests, 74 wickets thrown in. He's come over 14 wickets at an average of 13. And is a walking Twitter time reel, if that's a thing. <laughs> like you're just clicking mm. like on all these wickets, the stumps mm. cartwheeling everywhere. He's fiery, he's fast, mm. great celebrations, and just uh, icing on the cake for a, a a great bowling attack when it's at full strength like this. Mm. Having him thrown in is uh, is great as well. Oh, Matt Parkinson was on a hat trick at one point as well. Oh, didn't I miss that part. Uh, Hassan Ali, I, I think we have to describe him as busy. He's one of those bowlers, isn't yes. he? He's busy. Everything he's about him, he's run up, his deliveries, follow through, celebrate everything. He's busy. We love it. Uh, right, let's get last game of Division 1. It was a draw, Rob. We had all those results, four results. We finally had to have a draw. Yorkshire, North Ant. So let's get on this one. Um, first off, the Sanderson-Berg new ball partnership got North Ant off to a solid start in this game as Yorkshire would just miss 196. Gareth Berg. He of about the same age as me, as nearly said us. Um, I'm not far off. <laughs> he will look particularly impressive. Five for 58. The old boys can still do it. Uh, Dimaf Karuna at the Sri Lanka. Uh, he came in at the top of the order for Yorkshire to strengthen them, but it was the middle order England hopefuls in Dawid Man and Harry Brook who led the way, um, scoring 64 and 84 respectively. Uh, more on Harry Brook later. Uh, Emilio Gay was the man for North Ants with 65 in their reply of an underpar 204. Name check 
Will Young, just for you, Rob. Kiwi, 33. Um, and Luke Proctor, 38, not out, also contributed. Jordan Thompson, 454 with the ball for Yorkshire. And um, the Yorkshire then took control of the game in the second innings. We've seen this again, haven't we? Uh, they decided to just forget what they'd seen um, and go for it. 406 for three, a brisk 406 for three before they declared. 21 year old George Harris recording his maiden first class 100 with 151 not out. Nicely done. Adam Live, 51, and Karuna Ratney, 36. And then Dawid Milan, 75, and Harry Brook continued his fine form with an unbeaten, very, very uh, smooth and rapid 77 off just 63 deliveries. So the declaration meant a target of 499. Hmm. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> Too many for the chase, but it was good to see Northampton comfortably close out the game and secure the draw. Will Young top scored with 96. Uh, Rob Keogh, 46. Lewis McManus, 16 on out. And Matthew Kelly, 42. Uh, Matthew Reeves, uh, 50, uh, 3 for 57. And Harris Ralph, 2 for 76. And the rest of the Yorkshire attack. They did the best, but couldn't quite find a way for this resilient Northampton batting card. If you're Yorkshire, I think you're going to be Pleased with the first innings bowling performance, but you're going to be a little bit disappointed they didn't have that ability to really break down this Northamptonshire side and go for the win. Yep, I totally agree. Mm. And they they did a, a tweet at the end of day three. Tweet. Ooh. It's got it's got these things going on, and it wow. basically said, "Oh, we're closing in on victory." And at the end of day four, Northamptonshire retweeted it, going, "How did that go, mate?" <laughs> oh, <laughs> when they played out for the draw. So I like a bit of that Twitter banter between them. Love um, it. Have, have that, a man. day, George Hill. Just just enjoy your day, mate. That maiden uh, first class century, maiden county championship century, was exceptional. He's only twenty one years old, Rich. He's from Keithley. You know, my dad used to go to Keithley a lot and watch Keithley Cougars play rugby league. So <laughs> it made me quite happy to see he was from Keithley. He was an all rounder. Played England under nineteens. He was a vice captain at the two thousand twenty World Cup. Um, and he looked great. He, he really genuinely looked great. I watched a bit of him live. I watched a bit of the highlights, and I was thoroughly, thoroughly impressed. So enjoy your day, mate. Someone else who's enjoying the day and pretty much enjoying the season's Harry Brook, 84 and 77 not out. He's seventh in most runs in the county championship combined between the two divisions at the moment, only been dismissed twice. Harry Brook, and I've said this, he wants to play three formats for England. He's gone away. He's, mm-hmm. His white ball game, T20, pretty good. His red ball game, Hasn't been so good until when you dig deep into it, the last couple of years, it's starting to come together. The first few years he played, he averaged 13, 25, uh, 22. Not good enough. 2020, shortened season, averaged 43. 2021, averaged 37. This year, 159. More importantly, he's got a century. Last year, two centuries. So he's starting to build that body of work and get conversions to get big runs. And I really, I like that. I like how he plays his cricket not sold 100% on his technique being a test match technique, but Mm. technique isn't everything. He's scoring runs. What more can a young lad do? He can just go out there and score runs. Just just, just on Brook, if I can, just quickly. So far this year, four innings. He's got one century in 350s. Yeah. So he's making the most of it, isn't he? And and can I just say, where did George Harris come from? You should have corrected me. George Hill. The young man that scored his maiden first class hundred. Tell me if I'm getting a name wrong. These these names come from nowhere sometimes. They just fly into my George head. George Harris. Out. I didn't even hear you say George maybe, Harris. I thought you said George Hill, to be honest. Oh, did I? Oh, maybe I did. Who knows? If I didn't, maybe I'm just funneling a little bit of Beatles there. It was maybe the son of George Harris. I don't know. So, Harris so. Ralph. Maybe him throwing in. Um, <laughs> yes, there we go. There we go. That's the reason. David Malone needs a little bit of a nod, a little bit of consistency in his game. 350s yeah. from four innings this year. That's good. But like we come back to, David Malone's down the pecking order. He needs to score some runs. I'm glad you gave a bit of love to Gareth Berg at the start because, you know, 41-year-old, still going strong. I was watching him bowl and he's he's still got a – it's not gas, but he's got enough in the tank and did enough in the first innings. 24 wickets at 25 last year, 10 wickets at 22 (laughs) this year. He's been going since 2008, Rich. 308 county championship wickets thrown into the mixer over that time. 41 years old. I'm 37 and – I couldn't bowl six balls these days, let alone <laughs> turn out week in, week out. Um, slight disappointment at the end. And I think Will Young needs a nod for the the innings. He batted six hours against a real quality of tack. Mm. Um, Stephen Patson, Harris Ralph, Jordan Thompson, Don Bess, David Milan. Okay, so all, all bowls on equal. But it was an exceptional innings. Batted heaps of time. He was great last year when he was at Durham. He averaged 39 early season. Where it was wet and it was harder to bat. He scored two centuries. 
He averages 31 in test match cricket in that time since then. And he's coming off great form after scoring 200s against the Netherlands in the series. So he, he's an exceptional, exceptional signing for York, uh, sorry, for North Ants and will do very well for them this season. Mm, absolutely. Right, that wraps up Division 1, Rob. Um, you've got the table there, haven't we, in front of us? Surrey leading the way, Hampshire, Lancashire close behind. Somerset, Rob's pick for relegation, where Rob predicted they would be, alongside Gloucestershire. North Ants just keeping their heads above water alongside Kent at the moment. Um, hmm, I don't think there's any mass surprises there early season. I think Surrey, with the players they've got available, it's, it's, there's no surprise at all. Uh, Warwickshire, obviously a little bit off it, maybe, but not in points. The Warwickshire and Yorkshire are very close. And obviously, some of those teams have only played twice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, if the table finished like that, you wouldn't be surprised come the end of the season. So, yeah, fair play. Yeah, absolutely. So let's crack on Division 2, Rob. Um, Division 2 do not like to play four innings games of cricket anymore. <laughs> I think that's all we can say. So four games to go. Stick with us. What have we got? So this Middlesex, Glamorgan, Lords, this was the first game to finish this week. Um, Middlesex are looking pretty good. Glamorgan, lads, how did you beat Knots last week? <sighs> right, anyway, that's out of my system. So after a convincing win last week against Nottinghamshire, Glamorgan, they slumped to an innings defeat against team. I like to call them proving. Um, they're led by a wonderful performance from their bowling unit with ball and bat for Middlesex. So after rolling Glamorgan cheaply for just 122, Middlesex then posted a really decent score of 336. But they did find themselves 110 for six at one point and had to thank wicketkeeper John Simpson's 104 not out with some solid support in the batting by bowlers Toby Rowling jones 65, Tom Helm 33 and a certain Shaheen Shah Afridi 29. Um, one thing we've missed at the moment Rob, is the performance of Shahin Shah Afridi. I want to wrap that up at the end and I want you to talk about it because I feel like you're going to be talking a lot about Shahin Shah Afridi. Um, so we'll, we'll put, put a pin in that one for now. But Roland Jones, three for 34 and Tom Helm, two for 24 in that first innings. So a great performance with bat and ball from the bowling unit for Middlesex. Um, so with the lead of 214, Middlesex bowlers took to their field once more and they attacked to Glamorgan. Again, they skittled them from a marginally improved 132 to claim the innings win. Shine Shah Afridi obviously made the headlines in the end. I'm sure you will talk about him. But the evergreen Toby Rowling jones 8 for 74 in the game. He took 5 for 40 in the second innings. was brilliant. And Tom Helm, once of England chatter, that man, uh, he impressed with 5 for 49 across the two innings as well. 2 for 24 and 3 for 24. Uh, Shai and uh, two, uh, three wickets in the first innings, one in the second innings. Nothing really of note for Glamorgan with the bat. Chris Cook, 31 in the first innings. Michael Neese, 27. Scores of 122 and 132 are not going to cut it. But does the credit fall with this bowling attack led very impressively by a certain Shaheen Shah Afridi? Yeah, it, it, it was exciting, actually. It was mm, like it was a genuine morning. air of excitement around watching the game. Yeah, mm. I was watching every single ball he was bowling um, and also on Twitter. And it was interesting. I was listening to the Middlesex coach talk about it. And he just said, as soon as Afridi walked in, the whole place lifted. Um, yeah. at Lords. Everyone in that team was like, who's going to go bat first? Who's going to go bat against him? And they were all like really giddy and excited to have someone because yeah. he's he's got an aura and he's got he an has. international body of work as a young man that is exceptional. Um, mm. But I'm going to make a call here and say he Ooh. was out bowled by Toby Roland Joel, mm, uh, Toby absolutely. Roland Jones, who was incredible. This was like yep. Roland Jones rolling back the years and going, oh, you remember that time I played for England before I got injured and never quite made it back? This was that. He's got 11 wickets at 19 this year, 25 at 18 last year. He's he's coming into another era of him being a really efficient bowler. Um, and I thought he was exceptional and they were very, very good together. The thing that made a freely stand apart is Marnus Labuschagne is in the top <laughs> one, two batters in county championship cricket in terms of performance over the last few years. He's been number one in the test world for, you know, or was. He's probably dropped off, but he's one of the finest um, test players going around. 2,000 runs average is 60. That doesn't happen every day. Afridi got him out twice. Once with him leaving the ball and the next one LBW, which may have been a close call, but, it, you know, if I was bowling, I would have felt hurt if it wasn't out as well. So it's the wickets you take. And I, th- I thought he was great. He was a great addition into that team. Middlesex, I think I called out on Twitter, are a cheeky, under-the-radar sort of team that mm. could actually do pretty well this this year. Their bowling attack is currently ranked second out of the 18 counties, and the batting lineup 
is ranked ninth. Um, ninth isn't ideal, but you think that's across 18 counties, not just the 10 in Division 1. Mm. They've got every chance of sticking in this division and being a mid-table team and turning over teams. If you've got a decent bowling attack, you can turn over a team. I really like Tom Helm. I saw more of him bowl <laughs> this week than I have done probably last season. Mm. But I was really impressed with what I saw. A guy with 98 first-class wickets at an average of 29. Just mm. good good cricketers, mate. And if their lower order can keep firing, keep getting the top order out of trouble, um, they're going to be okay because the top order is better than what it showed here, particularly if you've got Robson, Stoneman, uh, Peter Hanscom, who was woeful mm. last year in county cricket, but is mm-hmm. better. And no, he's not. He got a duck again this week, but he is a decent fixture. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Tom Helm, it, it, was, it doesn't feel that long ago we were genuinely talking about him as one of those cabs waiting patiently in the rank um, for for an England seam bowler. Um, so it's not quite worked for him, but uh, it's great to see him firing again. Roland Jones, lovely, love to see. He gets an evergreen shout, doesn't he, uh, as I'm joined by the cat again. Um, Shine Trafridi has got Labashain seven out of eight innings. Um, so far, I believe it's his bunny. He, you know, Labashain is he's camping out in Shine Jarafridi's kit bag as he goes home back to the hotel or wherever he's living at the moment. Um, it is exciting. These are the players we want to see in county cricket, the superstars like this, absolute legends of the game. Glamorgan, very, very up and down a couple of weeks. We have to wait and see who they are. Are they this? Is this who they are? Or was it mm-hmm. last week when they got a really good performance and got a win against Knotts? Um, and smoothly moving across to Nottinghamshire, Rob, if you uh, if you will allow like me. Like it. Um, Durham hosted Nottinghamshire, Chester Le Street. Um, not this is more like it. Innings and 141 run for Nottinghamshire. Um, yeah, let's let's get stuck in. So they dismissed Durham first innings, 230. Um, I think I believe they chose to have a bowl as well, Nottinghamshire. So a pretty good decision. Uh, but after dismissing Durham for 230, Ben Slater went on to then post a career best score of 209 not out to carry his bat for knots and to show what a good batting deck it really was um, as they set a dominant total of 448 for nine uh, before then going on to skittle the home side for just 117 to secure a win inside three days and gets not back on track. So as we said, knots decided to bowl first and after a very steady start, they got stuck into Durham, eventually beat, bowling them out on day one for just 230. Liam Patterson White. Can we start remembering that name? He needs to start yes. getting some more credit and I maybe we should be potentially adding him to the England watch. Uh, on performances, we should. Whether or not he's actually uh, close in the uh, the selection, who knows? But Liam Patterson White impressed again. Five for fifty four uh, made after the early inroads were done by the impressive not seam attack of Dane Patterson, Luke Fletcher, and James Pattinson. Uh, South African Patterson taking three for fifty three. Opener Sean Dixon top scored of fifty four. Knots then saw the day out with non, no wickets down, which was quite important for that last hour or so, and then they really took the game forward on day two. Brilliant Ben Slater, as we said, starring for Knots. Uh, by the time Knox declared for 448, Slater had batted for 10 hours for his 225. Ben Duckett hit 54 in form, whilst Lyndon James took a wonderful 108, the first of many hundreds uh, for the talented all rounder. Um, that man, Matty Potts, Rob, we have to talk about him. Star again with the ball, 607 off 35 overs. Um, really impressive performance with the ball for him in amongst a, a pretty dour and depressing game for Durham. Um, second innings for Durham, then Luke Fletcher got straight into Durham order before the trio of Dixon. Keegan Peterson, the South African, and Captain Scott Borthwick put up some resistance, but it wasn't for long. Real unit ball and effort saw Durham finished off with just 117 inside 34 overs for a very early finish. Luke Fletcher, three for 46, last year's leading uh, wicket taker. James Pattinson starting to get, get going. A um, little bit of a slow start for him last week, three for 34, and Dane Patterson, two for 22. Liam Patterson White, two for seven off eight, just to cap off. Yeah. Pretty, pretty easy, uh, steady bowling, bowling tap for him. And yes, you do need to be in uh, called Patterson or some variation of Pat something to make yourself into this not bowling lineup. It seems a long time ago, the first day against Sussex, when Sussex scored 300 in the day and we went, <laughs> oh, maybe Oof. all the hype around knots is a bit wrong, but it shows it's a marathon, not a sprint. That's one day in isolation. Mm. Came back amazingly to win this game. That game won last week. And here, it's actual domination, and the bowling attack mm. looks exceptional. Dane Patterson is Under, brilliant. He's underrated. absolute brilliant. He's such a leader with the ball. He's like mm. all fire and heart going into mm. it, and I, I really like that. It's been a long time since he played his test matches, four wickets at 41, but his first-class mm. uh, record, 425 wickets, an average of 23. That is exceptional from 119 games. 
Um, much kudos to him. It's it's been a brilliant performance. Maddie Potts, glad you mentioned his name, mate. Back to back six wicket hauls, uh, six wickets against Leicestershire for fifty eight, and then six for one hundred and seven against Notts. So he's having a mm. a great start to the season. If I'm Durham, I'm a, a little bit worried. If David Beddingham doesn't score runs, mm. where are they coming from at the moment? Because I'm not quite seeing that. And they've got backup. Keegan Peterson is a better player than what we've seen in, in county championship cricket so far. 28 years old. He averages 34 in test match cricket. He averages 52 in first class cricket. He's better mm. than what we've been seeing yeah, on the field. Uh, Lyndon James, exceptional, 23 years old. He's now got a first class 50, sorry, first class century to his name. He's also got a list A five for and a first class four for to his name. Twenty four wickets at thirty with the ball, averaging thirty six with the bat. That puts you in all rounder territory to me. So Absolutely. he's definitely a name to watch. And we 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 talked about Ben Slater a lot on the England depth chart list that we put together. We had him joint tenth with Sam Robson, and it, it had been a really up and down time for him over the years. Mm. Two thousand twenty, average sixty in a shortened season. He did well last year. He averaged 39. What do you want to see? I want to, I want to see some hundreds again. He's get, got two one year, two the next. Um, and then he started this year really cold. Couldn't buy a run. Yeah, 245 runs at an average of 81 all of a sudden because of this one innings makes it look a hell of a lot better. <laughs> and if he can get on a run, he's going to work his way up that de- uh, depth chart. Um, yeah. The other question, and we got, we got asked it on uh, Hot Takes on our Twitter at Leading Edge Pod. Liam Patterson White, England watch question mm. mark from Simon Trafford. Yeah, it's a fair question. I think that's where I saw it when I mentioned it as we were talking through. So I think at the moment we're probably not there when we're looking at the bowlers, but it's the fact that he can bat. I'd like to see if he can kick himself on to become a genuine all rounder. England love it. That's yeah. what England love, that in spinners. Um, so whether or not he's in the conversation with your Matt Parkinson's, etc., to be the next one up if they decide to not move on from Mr. Leach. We shall see. But if Patterson White can show what he can do with a bat, and he, he's a very capable batsman. I think he has 100. Uh, you can correct me if, if, if I'm wrong. So I think that's where he needs to show. If he can keep taking wickets, and at the moment, he's the leading wicket taker in Division 2 with 18 wickets this season at an average of 15.11. That is not spin bowling. I thought April was for the Seamers. I thought it was for the county trundlers. It's yeah. spin fest at the moment, isn't it? Uh, Liam, 18, yeah, superb in six innings. Matty Potts, credit to him as well, 16. He's the second leading wicket taker in Division 2. And he needs to be somebody that we're chatting about. Maybe not for England Watch just yet, but he needs to be in the conversation, not far away. But I think Liam Patterson White is certainly getting close to a conversation. If he can get some runs, become a bit of a Don Bess type player, if for want yeah. of a better term, one of a better comparison, I think that's where he then starts getting the attention because then he could slot in perhaps at that eight or nine slot. Um, and that's how you beat out potentially a Leach or a Parkinson or a Verdi who are 10 11s, aren't they really? Mm. Pretty much, mate. But yeah, good for not. Mm. Not yeah. so good for Durham. No, absolutely not. No, it's a bit disappointing. I mean, they have got other players made runs this year. Sean Dixon started the summer really well. Yeah, he started he? good. Uh, yeah, Michael Jones as well. But they do need to find a way of scoring runs when uh, Beddingham does fail. Uh, one just, last name I just want to mention, Ben Duckett. Uh, he got a few runs in this one. But he's firing at the start of the season. 302 runs at an average of 75. Um, really impressive start this one for Ben Duckett. And somebody I believe we will probably be talking about when we look at potential number threes. Mm. We definitely will, mate. He's on the list. Right. He's on the list. Get in. Right. Two more games to go. Let's rattle through him. Leicestershire, Derbyshire, Grace Road. Derbyshire won by an innings and 68 runs. Uh, and this is the, the first time since 1896 that Derbyshire have done such a thing over local rivals last year at their home of Grace Road. Um, and they have to thank the star man, the star man of the county championship season so far, Shan Massoud. Uh, he set this win up as he registered his second double hundred in consecutive innings. Yes, his second double hundred in consecutive innings, just to make sure everyone understands exactly what this man is doing at the minute. He is a run machine. Um, so Leicester will not be happy with the first in settler 213. Sam Evans, top scoring with 63. He's impressed again so far this year. Sam Connors, talking of leading wicket takers, he's the third leading wicket taker so far this summer in Division 2. He took four for 62. Uh, and then it was enter Shan Masood. Shan Masood time. After hitting 239 last week, he unbelievably almost matched that with a knock of 219, ably supported by Wayne Madsen, who seems to be reborn this season. 94 for him and Lewis Deplu. 
61 not out. As well as a maiden first-class 100 from Matty McKiernan, who hit 101 in just his fifth first-class game. Proud moment for 27-year-old late bloomer. Um, Ed Barnes grabbed himself 501 against the Masood-led carnage. Uh, Derbyshire then wrapped things up pretty pretty comfortably, didn't they? Dismissing Leicester for 250. Alex Thompson taking three for 50 in 39. And uh, two wickets apiece for Saranga Lakmal, the experienced Sri Lankan, and Anuj Dahl, who, uh, who looks a decent little bowler as well. Um, Sam Evans again, 33. Hassan has had 32. They started well, but we've, we've, we've told this story th- this week already somewhere else. The openers looked all right, but they just couldn't sustain the effort. And after that, it was very little resistance. Lewis Kimber, 54 top score, and Callum Parkinson down the order with 49. An innings win for Derbyshire. Really, really impressive performance. Derbyshire started well, mate. Um, mm. They've had a big overhaul. They've got uh, Ian Bell in as batting coach. They've got exceptional Mickey Arthur coming in. Yeah. They, they've made some good plays in this offseason, and you're starting to see it um, to just drive through. And great selection. Sean Masu coming in is... Yeah. It's actually exceptional. 611 runs at an average of 152. <laughs> a strike rate of se- a strike rate of 73 <laughs> is ridiculous. But this is what makes it amazing is boundary runs is only 46%. So it's ones, it's twos. It's just classical batting. Um, it's, it's just exceptional. 91, 62, 239, 219. What a start to the season. He's got a first-class record of 37. Well, that's getting blown out of the water. Mm-hmm. Incredibly, <laughs> his list A uh, average is 57. And he's mm. he's got 14 list A centuries as well. So if he's part of the white ball unit for Derbyshire this year, they have made an absolutely exceptional signing, and he did pretty well uh, in mm. the PSL when I watched that. Um, have a day. M- Matty McKeeran, like you said, mm. 27 years old, first first-class century. There's only five games into his mm. name, right? He Mad. played two innings in 2019, four innings in 2020. He had one innings last year, scored mm. 23, right? You know, you're not expecting a lot from someone coming in who's not scored a lot of runs, who's 27 years old. There might be a reason why he's not had an opportunity. Um, and then he comes into the middle order, and as Simon Cow would say, he made it his own. He did. And mm. he, what do you do? I get an opportunity. I go and score a bag load of runs, and you're not going to be able to drop me now. So going forward, they've got themselves a guy batting at five behind Wade Madsen, who is in absolutely exceptional form this year, slapping the ball everywhere. So mm. I I like this Derbyshire team. I, I really do. I think they're starting to build something pretty good. I think the bowling attack, um, Anuj Dahl as well. I've watched quite a bit of him bowling over yeah. the first three weeks. I'm quite impressed with his pace, mm. his accuracy. Um, not aggressive going over the top, but there's a positive mentality to his bowling, mm. which I really like. Sam Connors, you've touched on, is in exceptional form. He's got 15 wickets at 27. Uh, just just looking really, really good and looking mm. like a team that might, for the first time in a long time, be ready to compete a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Alex Thompson's there with the ball as well. He hasn't got a particularly uh, you know great average to, to write home about, but he has got nine wickets so far, which gets him pretty much in the top 10 in Division 2. So, it's a really impressive performance. Sham Masood, what happens if he fails? That's the big question, isn't it? Who's going to yeah. step up? But Wayne Madsen is looking really strong as well. Um, and if you've got lads that have only played a few first-class games coming in and scoring hundreds, there is an opportunity for everybody to do well at Derbyshire this year. And it's nice to see Derbyshire, um, some uh, one sports team in Derbyshire, doing quite well at the moment. I have no further you comments to make it, on that. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Anyway, last game, last game. Let's get wrapped up. We're down to New Road, Rob. Uh, Sussex versus Worcestershire. One last game, one last innings win and a Worcestershire win for this one. An innings and 34 runs. You mentioned Ed Pollock earlier. You were tweeting about it. I had to turn over for it. And I think by the time I turned over, he got himself out. But he was off to an absolute flyer in this game. 77 off 74 deliveries. Looking like he'd be on for 100 before lunch on day one. I, you know, He didn't make it. He only got 77. It doesn't sound the best in the world. But it set the tone for a really positive performance from Worcestershire. And it was new skipper Brett Oliveira who starred with a stunning 169 not out. He is starting to fulfil potential. With the captaincy, it just seems some players, when they get that captaincy, it just lifts them to another level. Um, 169 not out of 333 deliveries uh, for him to register his second 102 games. His 10th, only his 10th in first-class cricket. I feel like he's going to be adding to that. Uh, he was ably supported as well by all-rounder Ed Barn on 75 and Josh Baker's 43. Uh, Sussex skipper Tom Haynes we're not going to talk about his batting at the moment but he was the most successful bowler uh, for Sussex in that Worcestershire innings 3 for 50 from his medium paces 
Um, but like last week, Sussex could not get going with the bat in the first innings and again were cheaply, well, you know, relatively speaking on this game, uh, dismissing their first innings for 269. Uh, Cheshire Joao Bajara led the way with 109 as a handy little follow-up to his 201 not out last time out. Joe Leach looking like a man released of the pressure of capacity with four for 60 uh, and two wickets apiece from Charlie Morris and Dilling Pennington. Sussex forced to follow on. They then found themselves 61 for five. Haynes, Pajara, Rizwan all back in the pavilion. Young Oak Rally all got 33. He offered a bit of resistance, but once he was removed, it was then a procession to the end with only on loan Grant Stewart, 67 not out, showing up. Uh, Josh Baker's three for 75 and Joe Leach's two for 28 were the pick of their bowlers for, um, for Worcestershire. So it's only right the last two wickets were taken out by Captain Brett Oliveira as a nice follow-up to his first innings, 169. First win for Worcestershire while Sussex sit bottom of Division 2. I quite like Worcestershire, you know. It's easy to say when mm. they've won a game, but they're actually yes. performing really well and positively with both bat and with the ball. I've got them ranked as the best bowling unit in cricket at the moment, averaging 22.77 with the ball, and they're averaging 42.92 with the bat. Put those two things together, you're probably going to win quite a few games of cricket over the course of the year. And I felt mm. how they want to play cricket is just fully on show when you go and watch Ed Pollock. Last week, he was going absolutely mm. bonkers, but they were trying to score quick <laughs> runs. Here, he's 77 off 74. He started to get a little bit bogged down towards the end of his innings before he got out, but there was a genuine shout. He could have scored 100 in that first session, and yeah. it, was just, mm. it was just brilliant to watch. The bowling attack can take wickets. Leach can take wickets. Dylan Pennington's incredibly underrated, as is Ed Barnard. Mm. So I, I just I just think they're a good team. Azarelli is going to score more runs than what he's done this season. Likewise, mm. if I look the other way and I look at Sussex, I'm like, they're they're a better team than what's mm. than what the outcome is. We said the issue is going to be the bowling. The issue mm. looks like it may well be the bowling for Sussex. If we look at them on this list, which charts them, they've got the second worst bowling attack in county cricket. They're averaging 57 with the ball over the first three weeks of the season. Again, you're going to have to score a lot of runs to contest games. They've got guys that can. Pajara started good. He's got two centuries to his name. Tom Haynes can score runs. Ali Ord's shown potential. You've got nothing out of Mohamed mm. Rizwan so far. Tom Clark's got a few runs. I think he got a century. But you can't be in a position where you're trying to score all these runs just to contest with a bowling attack that's one of the worst in the county championship. You can't do it. The bowlers have got to be better from somewhere. It is incredibly difficult when they're... It's, it's, it's wrong saying they're a bunch of young lads. They're a bunch of highly talented young people who's going out mm. on the field and doing the best they can. The, the best at the moment isn't quite working out for them. No, no, I think you're going to be disappointed. I mean, Sussex, you don't have huge expectations this year, but you're hoping for a really positive year. Um, and, the, the you know, it was deja vu, wasn't it? After that first innings... Last week, they then went on and put a monster innings together. This week, they, they, they made the same mistake in the first innings, but they just collapsed in the second innings. So you're going to be hoping for a little bit more. I want to know where Jack Carson is at the moment for Sussex. He's someone that really impressed me, the young spinner uh, last year. So I would like to know where he is. He's somebody that will improve that bowling lineup. Um, I haven't heard anything about him. I just assumed he was being rested or not selected. But he's somebody that I really, really rate and uh, think he will make a difference once he plays. Um, Worcester, I really just want to go back and just talk about Brett Oliveira just one moment as well. I just think he started the season so well and it's just what that team needs. They haven't quite got a Jake Libby uh, firing this year, have they? Um, Oliveira has stepped up as a captain and, and, and really started performing. He was an all-rounder years ago, a very promising young player. Um, and maybe this is a year we really see him fulfil some of that. And as you're clicking, do we have an update on Jack Carson? No, couldn't find it. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't find anything on the news on uh, on Jack Carson, unfortunately. Not to worry. Not to worry. So that's that's Division 2 wrapped up. We've got Knotts and Derbyshire vying for first and second. Knotts with the two wins, uh, Derbyshire with the two draws and a, a, um, in there, 52 and 51, respectively. Worcestershire following close behind. Leicestershire just above Sussex in the lineup. Uh, Middlesex and Worcestershire looking interesting. Glamorgan in third place thanks to that great win against Knotts. But they really did capitulate this week. So um, I'm really intrigued to see how Glamorgan go next time out. Yeah, interesting. I think Darbish is the one that's probably going to shock people on that table, being up in second, two Ooh. draws, one win, undefeated. Always a good position to be in. In fact, yeah, they're just looking like a 
a, a decent unit. If, if it's mm. just what happens if they don't get the runs to support them. Um, Sussex probably where we thought they might be towards the bottom. Leicestershire where mm. we thought they might be. I think Durham's the team that's going to be the most disappointed. They would have had yes. expectations of trying to be in, in contention for that top two slot. And at mm. the moment, we're just not quite seeing it, unfortunately. No, very disappointing times for them at the moment. Um, but not stop the table. We like to see it. I don't no buy you, you, whatsoever. You, you love yeah. to see it. I'm going to I'm going to leave you on this point. If you're watching on YouTube, it's so you can see this is top six cricketers per year, and in the bottom left hand corner in 2022, top six batsmen in England in April are averaging 40.17. That is the highest since 2001, which you can see on screen. That is quite exceptional. Batsmen top six are really, or batters, top six, are really having a good time of it. Why? That's the big question, isn't it? I mean, we've seen a lot of innings defeat. So bowling attacks are taking 20 wickets and finishing teams off. So what's the difference? You know, what, what's going on this year? It's not like it's, it's draw fests every week, is it? No, You're it's really not. People intrigued. are scoring big. Openers are particularly, yeah. openers are averaging over 40 this year, inflated by mm. Shamps, who've been exceptional. I, I need a bigger body of work to work this out, but I've yeah. got a theory the first couple mm-hmm. of weeks of the season, overseas players that are bowlers aren't generally on show and a few England mm-hmm. players aren't generally on show. And then weeks three, four, five, six, you're going to see those averages come down as bowling attacks get yeah. stronger. Um, and the bowling attacks that don't have international caliber players are probably going to get called out a little mm-hmm. bit and found coming short. That's my yeah. theory, the, but we'll see. The, it's- yeah, there's a, there's a working theory, but then a lot of the time in April, people were always used to talk about these these like I said earlier, the county trundlers. For to to be a little bit disrespectful in, in how I describe them, they were the ones that would take the wickets in these early uh, you know nice green conditions. So uh, so something slightly changing, isn't it? It'll be interesting to see how it goes as we as we move through the next few weeks. But uh, but a cracking first three weeks of the season, Rob. It doesn't stop for now, does it? We're we're straight back into it next week for round four with another nine fixtures. Can't wait, Rich. Can't wait. So uh, we'll be back this week. We'll be doing our top three depth chart of English cricketers who should bat number three for England. Make sure you subscribe, like, rate, review, wherever you are. Catch us on Twitter at Leading Edge Pod. We'll catch you guys next time.